giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So we're going to put up here, uh, if you haven't seen already, uh, hopefully you have seen the announcement, right? Uh, but a, a new COVID-19 uh, update from FIRST talking about the impact uh, to the 2021 season is kind of the main story, but there's a lot more to really unpack with something like this as well, too. And first off, just read off the main part for that, saying that uh, teams were unable to play in the 2020 game due to the disruption of the season. First, it's determined that the 2020 Infinite Recharge game will be replayed uh, for the 2021 first game changers, that, or non-game changers, I guess, uh, powered by Star Wars Force for Change. Uh, and over the next few months, the game design team will be looking at adjustments to the game, uh, which we'll learn about at kickoff in 2021. So I'm just going to uh, kind of do a little bit of roundtable here and jump in. Uh, Greg, let's start with you um, hearing about the extension coming in. Uh, obviously, you're a supplier, too, so we'd love to hear some perspective of that at some point. Uh, but what's kind of your thoughts in regards to Infinite Recharge expanding? And then we'll kind of let everybody else jump in. Yeah, I mean, overall, overwhelmingly positive, I think. I mean, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into a season and, you know, there's the experience side for students. And so I think that it's the right call. I mean, there's um, teams really wanted their chance to play and nearly students, you know, you know, to play in general. Like, I mean, so I think overwhelmingly this is the right call from first. I think that um, finances may be tight this year um, because of COVID-19 and everything that's going on. And so being able to, you know, use what you've got and then, you know, continue to evolve it pretty pretty great um decision in my opinion Brandon, i agree happen? yeah for sure i i, I agree i <clears throat> i know that uh first community in general has been uh speculating you know basically since the season got sh shut down and no one had anything else to do going from our usual million miles an hour to a flat stop but um i i think this is absolutely a great move by first um in general, our, I mean, our team didn't get to compete. Um, we were very close, and uh, and it was a huge bummer for us to not be able to get out there. Um, so it's it's great that we have a chance to um, to play this game. You know, we are, as a team, we really like this game a lot. Um, it fit our style really well, but we also thought that in general, it's just a really greatly uh, conceived game, and and was going to play really well. Um, it's going to be pretty bonkers now. I think you know, giving giving teams a whole year. You know, we don't know what kind of access teams are going to have to robots and stuff, but at least to come out uh, next season, play this game again. Um, already, I think it was going to be a really balanced, highly competitive game. Um, it could go down, you know, as one of the best played games ever um, if we do get a chance to get out there next season and, and run with it. So. And one of the things I think first is done right, like they had a lot of options on them, right? But I think the, one of the things they've done is they've really like clearly thought this out a lot, which is why they probably waited as long as they did to post about it. Like, I mean, okay, as long as they did, it's the middle of May, but it's still like they've thought through rookies, they've thought through payment options, they've thought through like off seasons and how those are going to run out this year as best they can. And I mean, right now they're saying, no, we're not going to support them. But I think what first has really done is like they're, they understand kind of the situation like no one wants to not use a robot that you built and you spent X number of weeks on. But at the same time, I think it does elevate the playing field because you're going to be already as good as you were, which is already six weeks. Yes, they might change some aspect of the game, but it's pretty it's going to be pretty similar and then just elevating it. So, like, imagine I don't know if you guys saw the 2056 reveal, but imagine that with another year of effort put into it. Like, it's going to be insane, unstoppable. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy. They're going to be game changers, you could say. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, okay, something I want to I, I want to point out that Tegan, you just made a comment in regards to like working the robot. And first, did uh, talk about in the Q and A of this. There was a question that said, "Can we keep working on our 2012 robot between now and kickoff 2021, and use summer all of it in 2021?" The answer is yes. Uh, so uh, two things that are really interesting about that. One, uh, how many teams are actually able to work on the robot right now? I guess, but. Uh, a couple, maybe, but uh, and if you're lucky enough to have your robot at home, maybe. Um, but then, too, it, it is interesting that they're like, yeah, you know, for sure, you're going to be using some part of your robot uh, for for the 2021 season. And I guess the, the follow up on that, uh, you know, from a budget standpoint, uh, as a team looking into it, uh, you know, the, obviously is going to be monumental in regards to saving teams money. Uh, any thoughts in regards to what registration fees might look like next year for returning teams? So, I mean, this is 
this was maybe a little bit of uh, being pessimistic, but I, I wasn't expecting uh, our team to get any refund uh, yeah. after things were shaking out. Um, I was super um, pleased and I really commend first. Um, I I try to do that, you know, where we can. I think we tend to be really, really harsh on, on first HQ as a whole uh, because we have such high expectations. We're so passionate about the program, but um, for them to to refund all the additional event fees. So, you know, if, if you had signed up for more than like your initial registration fee worth of events to get those, those um, entry fees back. And if you didn't get to play to get a thousand dollars back on your initial registration fee, I mean that you got to tip your cap to them. They, they also have um, to pay their staff and whatever else they have going on. So um, I, I was really happy to see that today. Um, with that being said, I think it means for sure you're going to be paying full price next year, you know, to, to get into Infinite Recharge again. Uh, that feels like the the equation, you know, that that is working out here. Um, as a lead mentor, I'm OK with that. Um, I do appreciate first trying to meet us, you know, part way here. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's that's where I'm sitting right now. The only thing I, I worry about is this impacting teams that aren't going to make it to next year, because I know there are going to be some, unfortunately. Um, I already know of one or two in Ontario who are going to not, they're not going to get to finish the infinite recharge. So then it's like, okay, you get $1,000 towards this registration that you're not going to use. But at the same time, like, what can they do, right? Everyone's kind of in a tight pinch here. There's not a lot of money to go around. So first is doing what they can. Yeah, I, it's still... You know, you feel for them a little bit as well. Totally, yeah. There, yeah, and I, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I, I think that, like, I think that Brando is probably right um, on the registration fees. But I also just the other perspective of this, right? Like, um, the team, you know, barbecue, like we budgeted to play at championships, to play at district champs, and so like that money is still there, right? So there, there is a good number of teams who play a second time. And so I think that there's a, a pretty good chance that a large number of teams might have that registration money that they were earmarked for those additional events that's getting refunded to pay next year's registration fee. So I, it, I'm hoping that it's a very small number of teams that is that don't come back, but maybe there'll be some grant programs or something like options for that. I know in the past, I, I can't speak for what, you know, like, but sometimes like NASA has done like program growth. I can think back to some of the special grants coming into like the 2009 season coming out of the 2008 recession. Like there may be things. So I, my hope is that teams have some stability because of getting the refund. And I think that that's a really big impact. Yeah. And I mean, it's different too. Like in Texas, it's a district, right? Now it's saying, okay, if you got your one district play, that's the cost of a regional, which is fine. Like, it's at least you got to play, which is, like, for us, that was the situation. We had a week one event. So we got to see our robot on the field. Um, I'm hoping that there will be a lot of teams that are able to kind of take that on the chin and roll with it. Because you might have some people who are unhappy, but at the same time, like, no one's going to be happy uh, 100% of the time. Or, you know what I mean? Like, can't everyone can't be happy with it. But I really do want to tip my hat off to first, who are doing the best they can uh, especially with like district champs being refunded and worlds being refunded, uh, et cetera. So yeah, I, I think it, it's realistically be best case scenario for for teams. You know, realistically, obviously, yeah. getting all their money back would be would be I guess the amazing. Best for teams. But like realistically, that it's the best case I think for teams. And um, and then leaving the, the the door open, obviously, to reuse your robot as is. You know, to play the, the same game again. Um, it, hopefully for the teams that are really like on on a threshold of maybe not being able to come back i mean i i can't really envision a better situation that first could hand to them right now yeah uh, so i think that's what this is all about honestly you know i think and this is why i really commend first is that they're they're thinking this through um and making sure that teams hopefully can weather the storm you know and then hopefully in a few years um you know we're maybe back to a different model more normal model for us but something i'm really interested in hearing about from first is uh we saw that uh star wars forcer change is back uh with their name on it and i'm really curious to understand the way that funding worked for that because to me there's one of two scenarios that either uh force for change said hey you know we didn't get our full roi out of this 
uh, we we want to get our full, our full ROI out of it. Please reuse, you know, our branding and stuff like that. Or I'm wondering if Force for Change end up giving First more money uh, to do things, which would obviously be the hopefully the better thing all the way around. We talked about you know First, uh, you know, funding woes and funding their employees and that sort of thing. And I really hope it's the latter, where Force for Change has stepped in and said, here, here's an extra few million dollars, go, you know, and, and do stuff like that. So I'd be very curious to hear from First. Uh, what that funding situation looks like because to, to me uh you know until we get a clear pick on what picture and what their funding looks like it, it's all speculation on that end really they go through uh you know what their funding was might actually be. obviously they're hurting they've lost money right but mm -hmm. to what extent would be interesting to see the season transparency on that yeah and i'm looking at the q a right now too they posted and then question 15 just says what will the 2021 registration be and normally it's pretty standard, right? Your registration fee is your registration fee. And if I'm not mistaken, it's been the same for a while. And they're actually saying that, hey, uh, registration fees for participating in the 2021 version of the game have not yet been set. Mm -hmm. uh, so hoping that, you know, there's still more to come to. The news isn't over yet, but really, as long as it doesn't go more expensive, I think everyone's going to be happy. One, one thing, too, I just wanted to mention was, was the timing of this. Uh, as well is an, is another tip of my cap to, to first like doing this now in May versus letting teams you know waffle through the summer and speculating like if you were going to announce it you had to do it now yes. but it, it, it takes some conviction uh, to do it so like um, you know I know people I know people tend to criticize you know the way we make decisions in first as a whole but you've really got to commend I think the the team there for like getting to the end of the you know the 2020 season. Uh, doing the showcase, which was really, I mean, kind of just about celebrating teams and and doing what we can from where we are, um, and then like and then putting it ahead to, hey, look, we're going to do this for 2021. We're going to let you know now, um, and you know let let teams know as early as you possibly can. So, yeah, totally agree with and, that. And I guess moving on to the other tone of things, like how this changes. Obviously, we've talked financials, but. Now that also means, like, physically with your robots, we'll have some teams building new robots. We'll have some teams reusing theirs with upgrades. We'll have some teams starting from scratch completely. Like, it's... They've still given us a new challenge, which I really appreciate, too. Because if, if it was going to be the same, then you can just keep your robot upgraded X number of times. But now we've seen things come out from all these great teams uh, that it's going to change... The meta, basically, and then obviously, first reserving the rights to change some aspect of the game means like we're still on our toes a little bit. We'll still get kickoff, but I think it's also the right thing to do for the teams and for the game uh, as a whole. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier Two Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.